Okay, our next speaker is James Sander from Paul Lee. There you go, next to the Go for it. Hello, uh, my name is James Sander. Um, I work for Hawley as a daylight designer. And today I'm going to briefly run through the modeling and simulation process for a glare assessment that we carried out um, for a leisure center in Maidenhead. Um, so I'll give you a quick overview of the brief. So the pool halls had a glazed southwest and northwest facade. Um, so the southwest facade was actually quite well protected by the large roof overhang. Um, within the pool, we had two pools and a spectator viewing area. So what we wanted to understand was the likelihood of glare happening within the pool. So not only direct glare, but it was valent glare, so a reflection off of the surfaces of the pool. Um, so the methodology, we decided to use the metric daylight glare probability. Uh, so this essentially gives you a value on the probability of glare occurring for a specific view. Um, so split into four thresholds. So the first two uh, are generally considered to be acceptable. And in this environment, disturbing an intolerable glare, so a DGP of 0.4 upwards is likely to cause problems within the space, such as a swimming pool. The next step was to identify sensitive viewing positions around the pool um, that, could, um, that glare could occur. And so these positions not only applied to staff, such as lifeguards, um, but also to visitors at the pool, spectating the event. So the workflow for the project, um, we received the model in Revit, and then Rhino and Grasshopper was used to uh, clean up the model, separate into layers, um, to get ready to run for a daylight analysis. The uh, radiance was used then to create the specific material definitions in order to um, as realistically sort of visualize the interior environment. And then Honeybee and Ladybug, as well as Evil Glare, were used to run the simulations and post-process the, the images. So one of the main challenges that we faced was modeling of moving water. Um, so to do this, we use a radiance command text func, which allows you to apply um, sort of a wavy surface to an object without actually having to model it. So we created a test model just to save time on rendering simulations. So uh, it was very much an iterative process where we changed the geometric properties of the water until we finally came to a, uh, a sort of water surface that we were happy with and we wanted to uh, carry, on the, um, carry on the study with. So once we were happy, we ran a test render just to ensure that there were no uh, errors within the model um, and then we were ready to run our simulations. Uh, so the results, so for each of the 12 positions, uh, we ran, um, we rendered HDR images for several times um, across summer solstice, winter solstice, and equinox. Um, these images were then run through Evil Glare, which then gives us that DGP value. And the advantage of this is that you can render uh, several times and positions and analyze the data a lot quicker using the numerical value as opposed to running through all the visualizations. Um, and here is just an example of view position 2. So you can see from 5 and 6 p.m., uh, which is receiving quite uh, severe di direct glare. Um, and this is kind of how we presented some of the results. So we have the DGP values uh, on the y axis. Uh, the time is on the x-axis, and the colors um, represent each viewpoint. Um, so once we had all this data, we were able to sort of fully understand how often there was a problem and what we could do to mitigate that. Um, thank you for your time. Would like to ask any questions? Brilliant. Thank you, James. Great presentation. So we had. Um, so, sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, it's about the mitigation options. To okay. So, yeah. Um, so the spectator viewing gallery. There's only a real problem sort of late uh, in the summer, so we didn't feel it was necessary. Um, and then it wasn't too many problems, so we did propose um, certain so evergreen trees potentially, um, shading methods, or maybe even sort of um, lower transmission, stronger sun uh, protective glazing. Uh, but it's more understanding, I guess, where lifeguards can and can't be at certain times, I guess. But 
it, generally it wasn't too bad, so we didn't have too much work, but it was understanding at the same time what was happening. Great, thank you James. Cheers.